Hi, I'm Greg Phillips. I'm the district manager with the Westmoreland Conservation District. Um, let's go on a tour. I'd like to show you a little bit about our facility and introduce you to some of our staff. We have the uh, pleasure of being housed in a unique facility. It's an 1880 barn that's been recycled. It once stood in Harrison City in Penn Township. It was dismantled by the Amish and then moved here to our campus, which is the Dunahoo Center campus in Greensburg on Dunahoo Road, just a mile and a half from Westmoreland Mall. Come on in, let's go inside. The center is named for our uh, uh, chairman of 40 some years, J. Roy Houston, who actually worked for People's Natural Gas. We've had the pleasure of having a relationship with People's Natural Gas for many years. They're actually located right across the road from us. Uh, we used to meet in their facility for our public meetings where the board would actually make decisions about our programs, but now we have this facility. So let's go inside and take a look. What I like to show people when we come in here is basically our program. So what we focus on doing is natural resource conservation. Uh, a lot of it deals with farmland, uh, productive agriculture, healthy forests, clean streams, shared vision, which is planning, planning uh, for communities, and sustainable communities. We built this barn with the help of many different donors, the founding contributors. It was all privately raised. Um, in the year 2000, we started with this facility, and we just recently finished the, uh, the build out of it. Um, we're coming off a major fundraising campaign for the last two years, and we called it Sustaining Conservation. And these are the donors that help um, keep the facility up to date and keep our programs innovative and expanding. Let's go inside and take a look. So this is the main public area of the barn and this, this room here is used for education. We probably have 30 to 40 different events a year in here. We just concluded our reception which was last Wednesday and that's why the bells are in here. We probably had 220 people attend our um, ceremony where we gave out two awards, one for Outstanding Conservation Farmer and one for J. Roy Houston Conservation Partnership of the Year, which is sponsored by People's Natural Gas. So if you look at the facility, you can see um, that it's all original timbers that were hand-hewn. We think it's, well, we know it's an 1880 barn, but it was probably used as a log cabin, some of it, even before that. So it may be on its third use. Um, you can see the chestnut timbers, you can see um, the large um, open area. The use of wood is very important to us because um, it's a very sustainable type of thing. So the barn wood that's up here is recycled. It came from the outside of the barn. The chestnut, which you can't find anymore, was on the inside of the barn. It was cleaned up and used in here. The poplar way down there was milled on site by the Amish craftsmen that helped put the barn together. Lots of cherry, raw walnut, and oak is used in the facility as well. Let's take a peek in here real quick. I want to give you a feel for the campus. So we are one building on the campus, and we are here in the barn, but there's also two other facilities. Originally, our home was in the corner of Dunahoo Center. We outgrew it and then um, built the barn. There's a third facility called Green Forge that's down here. The campus itself is about seven acres, and there's 60 acres of a nature park out back. Sandy, you want to say hi? Sandy DeZenzel, I'm going to introduce you to Sandy. Come on, Sandy. This is Sandy, our Director of Administration. Hi, nice to meet you, Jamie. Okay, we're going to move out here now. Two other people I'd like you to meet. Jen Novak is our Education Coordinator. Jen, and Mark Jackson's our Visual Communication Specialist. And they do um, the many publications and education events that, that, uh, that we produce here in the Westmoreland Conservation. One thing I want to explain about the building itself, and I'll sort of face this way now, is it's very energy efficient. We think it's the most energy efficient building in the county, and the reason is because you have structural timbers that make up the frame of the building, um, we were able to put um, um, insulation package on the outside that really gives it a, a great R value. The other thing we have is geothermal heat in the floors. So there's 15 wells outside that go 180 feet deep, and they take that constant 45 degrees of temperature that's underground and either translate it into heat savings or cooling savings. So on the average, this whole facility, which is probably 8,200 square feet, 
uses maybe $350 um, to produce all the energy we need. So it's a very energy efficient building. We have 20 people on staff. We have a nine per, uh, member board of directors. They are appointed by the county commissioners. This is where we meet in public once a month. We have our public meetings here. The um, window shades are coated with iron oxide, which is recycled and comes from the wetlands out at St. Vincent where we're cleaning mine water. It's also in the floor. You can see the color of it. We like to recycle and reuse. So where Jen's standing over here, you can see these products here were all recycled and reused to become a countertop. That's Greensburg City Sidewalk, and I believe that's a tool shed. The wood was a tool shed in the, in the town of Lake Trobe. Okay, we'll take a walk downstairs. The administrative staff works up here. The technical staff really works downstairs. assistant manager and he's also a forester so he's working with the people who own wooded parcels in Westmoreland County. There's probably about 2,000 of them that own 50 acres or more and managing um, um, wooded parcels is important because when you do that then good water quality is generated. We like good water quality. Jessica Kane is our erosion control specialist. We are delegated the authority to inspect the road um, and permit earth moving sites in Westmoreland County. So Jessica has half of the county and Chris Droste, who's in this office, has the other half. So we may issue um, 150 permits a year. We may review 300 plans a year, but they're all required to do that. If it's over an acre or more in size, they're required to get a permit. Then we inspect it to make sure erosion control is um, happening and that streams aren't getting polluted with sediment. We'll walk down this way. Andrea, I don't think she's in, but Andrea is the technical program secretary. Christy, Christy Seaback, and it's the Plans and Permit Coordinator. Say hi, Christy. Hi. Hello. Looks like Dan's on a conference call. Dan's our um, ag person, agriculture person, so he works with the farmers in the county. We, there's about a thousand farms left, left in the county. It's still the number one industry. If you look at the map on the wall, all our programs, I think, are directly related to land use. So the green is really the forested property in Westmoreland County. That's about half of it. The white is what we'll call agricultural, and it's about a third. Then the pink is the, that that's developing. So um, that really gives you a sense. So our programs are really built around land use, and they all affect water quality. Um, speaking of which, Beaver Run Reservoir is the birth of the conservation district. And we're in Greensburg here in the central part of the county. This watershed was totally overfarmed, deforested, and strip mined back in the 30s. It was so bad that the federal government had to come in. Um, in the form of the Soil Conservation Curve Service and uh, the Civilian Conservation Corps. When the farmers saw the conservation that went on there and how they restored that watershed, then they petitioned the county commissioners to form the Conservation District, and that was really the birth of our organization in 1949. This uh, room is where we meet with all the developers when they come in to uh, have a plan. They have to meet with us ahead of that and go over the plan. Um, this project where thinking about doing some work on now, Westmoreland County Fairgrounds, where we've done stormwater work. Um, we're probably going to do a little bit more over there. And up on the, uh, the touch screen is a project that we're involved in, and that's new stand. So if you're driving Route 70 and you notice all the, um, the highway improvements that are on there, that's a permit that's issued by us, and Chris Droste's inspecting at it as we speak. We'll walk out here. into the um, newer part of the lower level and um, this was built out as a result of our sustained conservation fundraising campaign and now it's the offices for seven of our staff. I think a few of them are in here. At least one is Chelsea. Hello. Chelsea Walker is our watershed specialist and Alyssa Harden. Alyssa Harden is our AmeriCorps member. And Rob Cronar also works here, and he's out in the field doing his thing. But they do a lot of watershed restoration work, like the mine drainage project that I mentioned at St. Vincent. 
Also road improvement projects in high quality watersheds where there's sediment or runoff that are um, contributing to pollution of a stream, they, they work to restore that. And they also work with our local watershed organizations, of which there are uh, four or five we work with on a regular basis. Um, Matt, you in there? Matt is not. And Jim? Well, let's go sit and see a big one. Jim is on the phone. Oh, Hampton Heights. All right, sure. Jim is our hydraulic engineer. So he's probably going over a stormwater plane with somebody. Kathy Hamilton, our landscape architect, works uh, in that cubicle. You'll meet her in a second. And Matt Zambelli is our green infrastructure yeah, specialist. He's actually involved in the design of the green infrastructure that you're about to see. And also we're monitoring uh, many of our practices and streams um, for water quality. All right, I'm going to introduce you to Kathy Hamilton. And she's our, as I mentioned, landscape architect and stormwater technician. She's going to take you on a tour of the outside. Hi, I'm Kathy. I'm going to take you outside and see some of the really neat things we're doing with uh, water quality, stormwater management, and demonstrations that almost anybody can use, either at their home or in their community, to improve water quality and to reduce stormwater uh, runoff. All right, here's our demonstration parking lot where we have used seven different types of permeable paving systems. Um, some of them are concrete blocks that have gaps between them so the water can run through them. Some of them, like this I'm standing on, is a poured in place. It's actually a granite aggregate held together by an epoxy. Uh, across the parking lot we have concrete grids and plastic grids that hold the gravel together because gravel, the rain can run straight through it, but the grids hold it in place so you're not creating ruts, you're not uh, spinning your wheels and uh, you get the paving system but you also get the permeable water going down through it. Um, we have tried products like this one here which is a four foot by five foot precast permeable concrete block. It's actually made in the eastern part of the state and shipped here. These are a nice easy quick way to pave. Uh, you just put them down side by side and instant permeable concrete paving system. Um, what I'd like to introduce you to is we have a stormwater trail here. It's a, a series of 16 different signs. You can see them by the blue sign. You can look at this first one here. That they give a great description of the different management techniques we have used around the property to manage stormwater. This is a naturalized pond that takes runoff from the driveway next to it and it's a rain garden where the water goes in, the plants use up the water, and the excess can overflow um, through an underdrain and uh, you know feed plants down below. So we're still working on renovating some of our landscape because the landscape, after about 15 years, uh, we had a lot of weed issues and some of the plants were getting a little old and overgrown and we needed to replace them. So we've revamped it and so you'll see some of our construction. But I'd like to point out a really innovative way to handle storm water and that's this rain garden here, which we have under this black plastic lid in the foreground, there's a pump that pumps water from our fish pond here up to the top of the hill. It goes in a small pond like a seep that you would find in the woods and that water runs into the back of our spring house which was built here specifically for this rain garden. The water comes down, trickles down through a gravel stream and into our fish pond so our fish are very happy and then when it does rain the water from some of the barn roof can come down the gutters into another rock channel and into the rain garden. So we have the recy recycled water, we have the storm water control and the management, and then we have a lot of native landscaping around it. Now I want to point this out to you because here you can say it's, it's about the size of a parking space and we're going to have our landscape contractor 
put in another grid system like we have that, that fills with the gravel, but here we're going to fill it with the soil and plant grass. So we'll be able to mow this, but we can park a car here too, which is pretty neat. So the water runs into the ground. It doesn't run off like you do, like it does in normal parking lots. But here you've got a gravel parking or a grass parking spot, but the car won't spin its tires. It won't sink into the grass. It won't make muddy ruts. It'll be a grass paved parking spot. It'll be pretty neat. There's another one of our blue signs. Like I said, there's 16 of them. The very first one is at the front of the barn where Greg first started. Um, the tour here. From this vantage point, you can see the building next door, which is a yellow concrete block building. And if we go a little further up the hill, you can see just the corner of the green roof poking through. We have about 9,000 square feet of green roof. It's covered with only about three inches of soil over a drainage bed and it's planted with sedums which are a succulent kind of like a cactus but without the thorns and not only do the the leaves of the succulents soak up the water but the soil mix is a special type of soil mix which soaks up the water plus we have that drainage layer which holds a little bit of water for those days when it doesn't rain and then it's basically makes the footprint of the building disappear if you have a green roof on the building then the rain that falls pretty much stays on the roof to provide uh, stormwater management up there and it does the added benefit of providing cooling in the summertime because a green roof is a lot cooler than a paved roof and it also helps with insulation in the wintertime to provide a little bit of uh, you know, heat insulation. So walking up around the front of the barn we can show a few more of the signs that talk about how we improve water quality with some of the techniques we've used here on our campus and uh, how you can reduce storm water. And we provide a lot of assistance to uh, the 65 municipalities in Westmoreland County as well as the different watershed groups. We can help them get grants, we can help them with design, and we certainly have provided a lot of examples here with our 16 storm water signposts with our demonstration permeable pavements, with our different rain gardens. So we can certainly help people with assistance with uh, anything that they want to do, conservation, stormwater management, erosion control, forestry, any of the programs that Greg mentioned earlier. Now back to the front of the barn here. We have only one permeable paving system in our parking lot, but what's really neat about it is that the paving system itself creates the parking lot lines and uh, a nice border around it. So if you do a close-up of the, the paving system, you can see you know, the pavers themselves have gaps between them that allow the water to drain through, so you never have puddles in the wintertime, so you don't have to worry about icing. One thing we tell people about these permeable paving systems is that you don't want to use salt on them. Um, salt just sits there <laughs> after a while because salt works by making a puddle and it joins with the next puddle from the next salt granule, but you don't ever have puddles on paving systems like this because the water, when it melts, it drains right through. So you can plow this because it's concrete. They're locked together by the nature of the systems. And so plowing is good, salting is not so good, and uh, it certainly dresses up the look of, of the barn. So I hand it back over to Greg to finish Thank you, up. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you very much. A um, couple of other things I wanted to mention is um, in the background, you can see one of our vehicles. One of our two uh, vehicles is, is powered by natural gas, and it is, at, it is being filled at the compressed natural gas uh, fueling station. If you listen carefully, you can kind of hear it. Um, we're saving money with that and we're also uh, being a lot more responsible because it is certainly a very clean, clean fuel. So uh, we have two of those vehicles right now. Let's walk over this way a little bit. Up here in the shade. And uh, I'll point out the nature park that I mentioned. It's named after Ann Rudd Saxman, who's one of our associate directors. 
you look closely, you can see that some of the vegetation is being knocked back a little bit, and that's a, a project that Tony, our forester, is doing. We're actually removing invasives. That border is heavily overrun with invasive plants, and uh, was sprayed recently, and Tony will be fencing that area off and replanting it with uh, natural vegetation. Let's take a quick look over here. Um, these trees that you see are part of an arboretum that's on campus. There's 120, 120 trees, 70 different species. Um, they were planted uh, when we first moved to this facility right here called Dunahoo Center in 1994. This one's actually uh, an elm and it's one of the ones that was uh, exposed to the disease and it's been injected with something so we're hoping that it's going to survive. So let's take a peek around the corner here. We uh, are blessed to have on our campus a number of different agencies. There's the Federal United States Department of Agriculture. They have three different offices here. Penn State Cooperative Extension Service is uh, on the facility. The County Farmland Preservation Program is here. And in the lower building, the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture is housed there, as well as the Western Pennsylvania Coalition for Abandoned Mine Reclamation. And one of the things that we get to show people all the time because of Cooperative Extension here is a uh, benefit of having the Master Gardeners program here on campus. So uh, when you look here, you can see demonstration vegetable gardens, and herb gardens, and perennials, and annuals all being grown in this facility. And if you look carefully through the trees, you can actually see the People's Gas Field Office, which is on Dunahoo Road, and uh, currently uh, a project that we're taking on as part of our sustaining conservation campaign is a frontage element of earth mounding and trees that Kathy's designed. That'll be going in within the next week or two. And also an extension of the sidewalk that takes us down to the county public works and parks building. So with that, I think I'll wrap up the tour and thank you for visiting. And uh, please visit our website, wcdpa.com. Uh, you can sign up for some of our publications. We have an e-calendar of the events we have. And we also do updates of our important projects. So again, thank you for visiting.